Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to graph transformations of a function. To complete this problem, we'll first graph the original function, and then separately consider each of the transformations. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to graph various transformations of the function y equals the square root of x. We're going to be looking here at four basic transformations, but remember that there are many types of transformations. The purpose of graphing these four in particular is to start getting you comfortable with transformations, but remember that if you ever run into transformations on a test, you can always just plug in points for x and then start plotting your results on your axes. That's your fail-safe when it comes to transformations, and what we're going to talk about today should really just familiarize you with the basics so that you can get these done as quickly as possible. I've graphed our original function, y equals the square root of x, on this first set of axes. Over here on the second set of axes, we're going to be graphing the transformation y equals the square root of x minus 2, this function right here. What you want to realize is that you can completely separate the constant, negative 2, from the square root of x. That's in contrast with, for example, this function down here where you have 2 times the square root of x. You can't completely separate them because they're multiplied together, but when you have two terms like this, the square root of x and a constant, negative 2, that are added or subtracted from one another, you can think about being able to separate them. And when the only thing that's transforming your function is a constant like this, that means you're dealing with a vertical transformation and your function's just going to be moving up or down within the same set of x values. So what we mean by that is that we have the function y equals square root of x minus 2. Every point that would be on our original graph, y equals the square root of x, is just going to get moved down two units. So in other words, we're going to take every point and shift it down by negative 2. So that means that, let's say it's about here, we'll take every point and shift it down by negative 2 so that our transformation actually looks like that. In this third example here where we have y equals negative square root of x, we have, notice, a negative 1 multiplied by our square root of x term. Whenever you have a constant multiplied by your original function, that means you're either going to be stretching or shrinking your graph and or flipping the graph across an axis. In this case, every point you plug in for x is going to return a certain y value. But this time, now that we've multiplied by this negative out in front, we're going to get the same y value but multiplied by negative 1. So this is just a transformation flipped across the x-axis and the graph looks like this. So just remember that if you've got your original function square root of x with a negative out in front, that means you're going to be flipping it over the x-axis. Similarly here with our next function, y equals 2 times the square root of x, we've got a constant coefficient multiplied by our original function. Same with the last one, we had negative 1 multiplied by our original function. Now we have 2 multiplied by our original function. And what that means is that we're going to be stretching the graph by a factor of 2. So when we draw the graph, instead of every y-coordinate lying along the original function, the new y-coordinate we'll we get will be double what the old one was. So that'll look something roughly like this. And the way you can think about it is we would have had our original y-coordinate here. Let's say that that's at 1. Well, our new y-coordinate will be double that, a factor of 2. So the new y-coordinate will be here at 2. Same thing here if our y-coordinate was 3, our new y-coordinate is 6. So it just stretches the graph by a factor of 2. Think about it this way. If we had had negative 2, if we had had y equals negative 2 times the square root of x, we would have been stretching the graph a factor of negative 2 and flipping it across the x-axis. And that would have looked like this. Keep in mind that the same thing goes for shrinking the graph. If we had the function y equals 1 half square root of x, we're dividing our original function by 2 instead of multiplying it by 2, and that would have looked something like this. So I hope that gives you an idea of the transformations you'll see when you have a constant coefficient multiplied by your original function. In the last graph, we have y equals the square root of negative x. And this one here is similar to this graph that we did in the sense that all we've done 
is at a negative sign, except that here we've added it in a different place. It's inside our square root sign instead of outside our square root sign. Remember that before, the negative outside of the square root sign meant that we were flipping across the x-axis. Since we have a negative inside our square root sign, that means we're going to be flipping across the y-axis. So our graph is going to look like this. And that makes sense because when we have a negative sign inside our square root here, we know right off the bat that we can only have a positive value underneath our square root. In order to get a positive value underneath the square root, that means we're going to need to put in a negative value for x. So that, for example, if we plug in a negative 2, we'll get the square root of negative negative 2, which will equal the square root of positive 2. The only way to get a positive value underneath the square root sign is to insert a negative value for x, which means that our domain for this function can only be negative numbers, and that's why we see the function getting flipped across the y-axis like this, the domain of our new function is only negative numbers. And that's it. That's a preview into some basic transformations. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.